I ranked the opening scene of every single Star Wars movie from absolute worst to absolute best, and to be honest, the results actually kind of shocked me. It turns out that some of the worst Star Wars movies actually have decent opening scenes, while on the other end of the spectrum, there are some incredible Star Wars movies with opening scenes that quite frankly aren't that good. I think you'll see what I mean in a minute here, so without further ado, let's get into it. First up, at the number 11 spot, with the all-time worst opening scene in any Star Wars movie is Attack of the Clones. And this is probably surprising to a grand total of zero people, because Attack of the Clones isn't exactly the most popular piece of film to ever be released. There are a few reasons that the opening scene is so disappointing, with the main one being that it's incredibly short. The scene only lasts for about three minutes, and in that time, all that happens is Padme comes to Coruscant, and as she lands, her ship blows up in a fiery explosion. But fear not, dear viewer, because the grand reveal is that Padme was actually flying in an Abu starfighter, and she's safer than a toothless shark. Now, as is true with almost all the opening scenes on this list, it's not so much that this scene is an awful piece of film. I mean, it does give context to the larger plot of the movie, which is that someone wants Padme dead. The biggest reason that this scene is last on the list is mostly because every other opening scene in this video is at least slightly better, whether that be more entertaining or more crucial to the plot of the movie, or heck, even just better CGI. I mean, I'm sorry, but the Star Wars movies from the 1970s look more realistic than this. And this explosion right here looks like the outro to the old Mr. Beast videos. Anyway, that's all well and done, and actually, that reminds me, I need to lay out a few rules for this video really quick. Basically, I'm defining an opening scene of a movie as the initial sequence of events in the movie that all line up with each other in a set timeline. Now, I'm going to do my absolute best to not let nostalgia influence my decisions, but ooh, that's going to be hard for some of these scenes coming up later in this video, and I'm sure that some of you will feel the same way. However, I guarantee that very few, if any of you, will experience any nostalgia for this next scene, which at number 10 is the opening to The Rise of Skywalker. Basically, The Rise of Skywalker kicks off with Kylo Ren kicking the butts out of a bunch of Mustafarians, and then going to Exegol and meeting Emperor Palpatine. To its credit, the part of this scene where Kylo Ren absolutely decks these chumps is pretty sick, and it's basically one of the last times in the trilogy that Kylo Ren is actually cool. Although, let me just say that that is not how lightsabers work at all. A lightsaber is a beam of pure energy, and therefore, it would never get stuck on a person, to the point that it would pick them up in the air and then throw them down like a sack of potatoes. To be fair though, this kind of thing happens all the time in Star Wars, and I can't really blame them for this mistake too much. Anyway, this scene gets really bad when Kylo Ren goes to Exegol and finds, to most Star Wars fans' absolute shock and horror, a reincarnated Emperor Palpatine, and thus kicks off one of the laziest plot points in the entire sequel trilogy. This this entire opening sequence just feels bland and uninteresting, almost like the producers realized they needed some way to force the movie to make sense, and that's why I ranked it as the second worst opening scene in all of Star Wars. Entering now into single digits, at number 9 we have Never Tell Him The Odds, that's right, it's Solo, a Star Wars story. Now, personally, I kind of enjoyed this movie, even though I am aware that it's the least popular Star Wars movie of all time if you go by box office revenue. But in terms of opening scene, I am sorry to say that it is sorely lacking. Basically, the entirety of this scene involves a young Han Solo out in the town, and then he comes back to get his girlfriend Kira, although since it is Star Wars, they felt the need to start the word with a Q and give Kira an apostrophe smack dab in the middle, of course. Anyway, Han throws a rock at the wall, Lady Proxima starts wailing and writhing, and Han and Kira both run away. This scene isn't terrible, but one of the most annoying things about it is how dark it is. Not like gritty and violent dark, but physically badly lit. And yeah, I know that's kind of the point, but you can make a scene in the dark while at the same time allowing the viewer to see what's going on, which unfortunately, I simply can't in this scene. It's not a huge issue, but I just think it's very annoying. Personally, I don't think there's too much wrong with this opening scene, but it's just nowhere near as good as the opening scenes that are coming up later on in this video. At number 8, I'm very sorry to report that it's episode 6, Return of the Jedi. Now, when I was making this list, I thought that I was going to be able to put Return of the Jedi in the top 3, because with my faulty memory, I assumed that it opened with Jabba's Palace, which in my opinion is one of the coolest and most interesting scenes in all of Star Wars. But you cannot imagine my disappointment when I went back to double check really quick and realized that ROTJ actually opens with this scene, where all they really do is introduce Emperor Palpatine in person for the first time and reveal that, whoa, the Empire has made a new Death Star, wow. Look, it's a scene that's necessary to the plot of the movie, and it is cool to see the Emperor in person for the first time, but it's not that exciting, it's not particularly interesting, and frankly, it's not anywhere close to how cool it would have been to kick off the movie with Jabba's palace. So while I completely understand why they had to put this scene here, it's with a heavy heart that I rank this at number 8 on my list. Up next at number 7 is Rogue One. Basically, the premise behind the Rogue One opening scene is that this random guy is living alone on some random planet planet with his wife and daughter, until that evil business owner from The Dark Knight Rises shows up and asks him to help him build the Death Star. Farmer guy says no, of course, and then he and his wife get killed, but luckily, Jin escapes. Honestly, this scene isn't even bad, it's just kind of formulaic. You know, generic bad guy shows up and kills parents, leaving the child to fend for themselves as an orphan, and then years later, the child confronts the generic bad guy. Same old, same old. But this scene does have Death Troopers in it for the first time in Star Wars live action, which is really cool. And this scene does play a pretty pivotal role later on in the movie, so it's about the middle of the list at the number 7 spot. 
spot. All right, for the sixth best opening scene in Star Wars, we have none other than Episode 8, The Last Jedi, which may be a surprise to you, and hey, it was a surprise to me too. You're not alone. So let me explain what I mean. But first, hello there, everybody. My name is Jared, and if you're enjoying this video so far, you should really consider subscribing because we are getting so close to 50,000 subscribers. Man, that is so many people. So thank you so much to all of you who are subscribed. I do really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And now let me talk about why I've put The Last Jedi at the number six spot. As much as I really do not like The Last Jedi whatsoever, and apparently I'm not alone, I gotta give it to them. The opening scene is actually one of the better scenes in the entire movie. Basically, the Resistance is evacuating their base and trying to escape until they're cut off by the First Order. Poe Dameron goes out in an X-Wing to meet them head-on, and with the help of some bombers, he manages to completely destroy a Dreadnought, after which the Resistance is able to escape. This whole sequence actually looks pretty good, and visually, it's really cool. Poe's entire attack on the Dreadnought is very exciting and fun to watch, and if there's one thing that Ryan Johnson gets right in the entire Last Jedi, and I mean that literally, by the way, it's the only good thing he does, it's create amazing visuals. But at the same time, there's some awful dialogue between Hux and Poe that's supposed to be funny and goofy, but it's really not. And this scene is the beginning of the end of General Hux being a cool character. As for the bomber scene, these ships are just infuriating to look at, because they are the least practical things to ever exist. I mean, going about two miles per hour, and then having to be directly over your target before you can drop your bombs makes no sense in space, and it's an awful design. But overall, I was surprised to find myself putting The Last Jedi at the middle of my list, and the opening scene is one of the more entertaining ones in the entire movie. Now we enter the top 5 opening scenes in all of Star Wars, and these last few could really go any way, because all of them are actually amazing ways to kick off a movie. But coming up at number 5 itself is the beginning of the sequel trilogy, The Force Awakens. I gotta give it to J.J. Abrams, he really hit the ground running with this one, because despite the intense hatred for these movies that most Star Wars fans rightfully have, this beginning scene is really good. Poe Dameron is on Jakku trying to get half of the map to find Luke Skywalker, when all of a sudden, the First Order comes in and starts ravaging the town. Poe sends the half of the map that he has away with BB-8 into the desert, and goes to fight the First Order himself, but is captured and taken away. Simultaneously, Stormtrooper Finn refuses to fire upon innocent civilians, and questions whether or not the First Order is really doing the right thing. Now, this whole scene has a lot going for it in a lot of different ways. First off, Kylo Ren is actually just a straight-up awesome villain in this scene. He's cool, he's intimidating, he's really ruthless, and he's got that epic lightsaber. Plus, he freezes a blaster bolt in midair with the Force, which has never happened before in a live-action Star Wars movie. So that was a moment that I remember completely shocked the audience when I saw it in theater. On top of all of that, this scene starts off with the promise that the goal of the Resistance is to find Luke Skywalker, which initially left every fan, including me, insanely hyped. Ah, uh, how naive of us. Little did we know what we were in for. Finally, to top it all off, this was the beginning of Finn's decision to desert the First Order, and at the time, based off of this scene, it's actually an interesting thing to see happen. That was at a moment in the sequel trilogy when Finn actually had potential and wasn't just a walking joke for the characters to abuse. Anyway, The Force Awakens definitely had the coolest opening scene of the entire trilogy, and personally, I never thought I'd put one of the Star Wars sequels in the top 5 anything, but here we are. For this next one, I'd recommend sitting down before you hear it, because at the number 4 spot we have Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. That's right, what is commonly regarded amongst fans as the best Star Wars movie of all time, and it's not even in the top 3, so let me explain. First off, I have to clarify that Empire Strikes Back does not start off with with the Battle of Hoth, and if it did, it would probably be higher on this list. How it actually starts is with the Empire sending out some probes to search for the Rebels, and one of those probes lands on Hoth, which, by the way, is crazy luck, because there's apparently 1.3 million planets in all of Star Wars, and the Empire just happens to send probes to the one planet that actually has a Rebel base. Anyway, when Luke goes to look for the probe, he gets attacked by a Wampa and dragged away to its cave. Using the Force, Luke pulls his lightsaber to himself in an epic moment and escapes, and then he sees Obi-Wan Kenobi's ghost, who tells him to go find Yoda. The best thing about this scene by far is is that it shows us how far Luke has progressed in his Jedi training. He's now able to use the Force far better than he could in the last movie, but still not super well. And it was really creative of George Lucas to find a small side obstacle for Luke to overcome right in the beginning of the movie. Also, this scene does introduce the concept of Force ghosts and Obi-Wan's ability to guide Luke even in death, so that's pretty crucial. Finally, we get to see Han Solo use a lightsaber for the first and last time, and I mean, just how cool is that? It's like seeing Vampire Toe Mater. It only happens once. But when it does, you're a lucky son of a gun. You are. All right, finally entering the top three. I've been looking forward to this. It's the OG, that's right, Star Wars A New Hope. I'd be willing to bet good money on the fact that everyone alive has seen this classic shot of the Star Destroyer chasing Chanto 4, and this leads to the Rebels being boarded, the Death Star plans being sent off to Tatooine, and Princess Leia being captured. By far the coolest thing in this scene is the introduction of Darth Vader, and George Lucas really played every trick in the book to tell us how evil this guy was. From the black, robotic, menacing suit, the ominous looking evil face mask, and who could possibly forget the iconic Vader theme. I mean, I know you've heard it before, but come on, just have another listen.
Overall, this opening scene was just such a classic way to kick off the original trilogy, and what an absolute banger of an introduction. Negotiating our way into the second best opening scene is, you guessed it, The Phantom Menace. And uh, did you catch my little easter egg there? You know, negotiations, like the title of this level in all the LEGO Star Wars games? No? Ah, it was a dumb joke anyway. This introduction to the entire prequel trilogy is absolutely awesome, and it starts off with Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi going to the Trade Federation to negotiate a treaty, but it quickly turns into an all-out brawl between the Jedi, the battle droids, the destroyers, and more. When you think about how significant this scene is for the Star Wars universe, it's actually very impressive. I mean, the creators had to figure out a way to display the role of the Jedi in the galaxy at this time period, and they nailed it perfectly in this scene. On top of that, the only version of Obi-Wan Kenobi that anyone had ever seen up to this point was the 70-year-old Alec Guinness. So it must have been shocking to see Ewan McGregor take his place at a mere 25 years of age. Finally, something that unfortunately can't be said for a lot of the prequel trilogy, but the CGI in this scene actually looks pretty decent, and these are definitely some good effects for the time. Although, why do they have to force run? I mean, look how goofy this looks. I'd maybe expect this from a Saturday morning Tom and Jerry cartoon, but not from a movie with a budget of $115 million. I mean, come on. Anyway, I'm a big fan of the opening scene, and what a way to kick off the trilogy, but now it's time for, and wait, do you hear that? That's right, give us the Clone Wars theme, because the number one best opening scene in Star Wars goes to episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. This long shot right here of them flying into battle is absolutely incredible, and it captivated 12-year-old me like nobody's business. It lasts for about 2 minutes, completely uncut, and there's so much going on here, but even after that, we get some great action, like dealing with buzz droids, dodging missiles, and leading clone pilots through an utter war zone. It's all just so epic. Plus, this scene gives us the best of the prequels dialogue, with some charming banter between Anakin and Obi-Wan that really makes you feel like they used to be master and apprentice. And it just goes to show how good of a teacher Obi-Wan must have been to foster this kind of relationship. And speaking of teachers, you have to check out this video right here, where I ranked every teacher in Star Wars from the absolute best to the absolute worst. 